Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the top five pairs of heated gloves. Sometimes even the thickest winter riding gloves just aren't warm enough and you need to plug into the power. A pair of heated gloves like these are the most reliable way to keep your hands warm because you get electrically generated warmth around your fingers and around the back of your hands for those really cold days on the bike. They power by either connecting directly to your bike's battery or to rechargeable batteries that you stow in a pocket on each of the gloves. These five pairs here are the most popular heated gloves around at the moment and we're basing that on review scores awarded by riders who bought a pair from Sports Bike Shop. We've also investigated ourselves so we can let you know how warm each of these pairs of gloves get and also how long any rechargeable batteries might last. As usual, if we have a more detailed review on any of the gloves in this video, then links will pop up on screen and they're also in the description below. So let's get on with it. We've been selling these gloves for two winters now and they've been very, very popular. They've had 55 customer reviews as we record this and 42 of those reviewers gave these gloves the maximum five stars. People particularly like the warmth, that they're easy to use because they come with the wrist batteries included and that they give good value for money. Again, that value for money is mostly down to the fact they come with the batteries included in the £200 price. These are the thickest of the five pairs of gloves we're covering here, which helps retain the heat and also helps to explain why they're so well regarded for warmth. They've got heated elements across the back of the hand and the fingers, and the power comes from two batteries which tuck into a pocket on each of the cuffs. When we checked these gloves, the temperature on the inside went from an ambient 21 degrees Celsius up to 41 degrees after half an hour with the gloves on the highest setting. When we tested the batteries, we found they lasted just over five hours when switched to the lowest setting and two and a half hours with the gloves on the highest heat level. As with everything though, those battery lifespans will vary depending on the conditions you're riding in. Now these are decent gloves in their own right. They've got leather palms that have overlaid reinforcements and then the back of the hand is textile, again reinforced with leather. There's hard knuckle armor, there's a visor blade on the left forefinger, there's Sinaqua waterproof membrane inside and they're rated to the basic level one within CE. They are quite thick, so if you have dexterity high on your priority list, then you'll probably want to see how these feel before taking the plunge. There's no option to run them from the bike's battery either, so your journeys need to be less than two and a half hours if you want to have full power heating all the way. So if a thick glove doesn't bother you too much and you're not riding on big trips without the chance to recharge the batteries, then these gloves are very hard to beat. If it's feel that you're after, then these gloves here are a pretty good shout, as they're thinner and more flexible than the RST gloves we started this video with. They also generate a good amount of heat, leaving them on the highest setting for half an hour took them up to 46 degrees C on the inside. Now, some of the customer reviewers were disappointed with heat levels from these gloves, and that's often the case as people are all different and so are their expectations. But perhaps the fact there's a bit less thickness to these gloves means the heat can escape a bit more quickly when the gloves are exposed to wind blast as you're riding. These G701s are made from synthetic suede for the palm and then ballistic textile elsewhere with no animal leather anywhere. There's a visor wiper on the left forefinger, you get hard knuckle armor, and they're rated to the basic level one of CE. The fingertips are touchscreen friendly and there's a slider on the scaphoid which gives extra protection. The gloves come with connection cables to power them up from your bike battery. The first cable hooks to your bike itself and then a second cable is Y-shaped and feeds through your jacket to power the gloves. Now we saw that 46 degree temperature that I mentioned earlier when we hooked these gloves up to a 12 volt bike battery. You can power them from batteries that tuck into pockets on each of the gloves, but that's an extra outlay of 85 quid for the batteries. These Kais batteries run 12 volts, which is more than most other brands, and we recorded similar internal temperatures when connected to these rather than the bike battery. It was just a couple of degrees cooler, so not much in it. As for duration, those batteries lasted three hours with the gloves on high and five and a half hours with the gloves on the lowest heat setting. The gloves come with a long or short cuff. It's £195 for these long cuff versions, or you can save a fiver by going for the short cuffed ones. Combined, they've had 29 five-star customer reviews from a total of 39 reviews. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, these gloves have no customer reviews on them at all yet, which might seem a bit odd when I said this list of gloves was based on customer review data, but these are a new model that are almost exactly the same as the gloves they replace, and the gloves they replace have got reviews on them. So those older gloves have 10 five-star reviews from a total of 15, and that's why I've put these Extreme GT gloves in this list. The only technical difference between these and the old model, which by the way, you might still be able to get if you're quick and you want a bargain, is that these ones get hotter. On the last model, the heating performance was held back by Gerbing to try and avoid riders getting skin blisters when the temperature outside wasn't cold enough to justify riding with the gloves in the hottest mode. That then led to complaints that the gloves weren't hot enough, so Gerbing have now released that cap on power. Now you have to unlock the highest heat setting by following the instructions in the box, and that proves that you really want them to be in hot mode. The idea of that is that you should only use the hottest mode when it's really cold outside, I'd say down to freezing or below. When we tested both pairs, the old and these new ones, it was pretty clear that these new ones were significantly warmer. After half an hour connected to a 12 volt bike battery and set on the highest level, the new gloves showed an internal temperature of 47 degrees C, which was 10 degrees more than those old gloves. These come with the kit to connect to the bike battery, but you can power them from Gerbing wrist batteries if you like. So you could power them from the existing 7.4 volt batteries, but the gloves won't get as warm if you do that. The warmest internal temperature we saw when we connected these two 7.4 volt batteries was 34 degrees. A pair of Gerbing 12 volt wrist batteries are coming soon, but they didn't arrive in time for us to test the temperature when running these gloves from those batteries. In general, these are the cheapest gloves from our top five, and they're a relatively basic pair of touring style gloves. They're made from leather, but there's no knuckle armor and they're short cuffed but you get all the basics you need. And as we record this, they're $149.99 a pair, which includes the cables to connect to the bike battery. The second pair of Kais gloves in this list are about 15 pounds more for a pair than the other ones, but there's quite a step up in the specification on the gloves themselves. Where the G701s that we spoke about earlier are made entirely from textile, this G601 has an extensive amount of leather, which covers the palm, the knuckles, and the cuff wraps. There's also a secondary leather reinforcement on the palm as well. The impact armor across the knuckles is also more advanced than the G701s with a material called Impacton, which is softer and more comfortable to wear. In terms of warmth, these gloves are very similar to the G701s. When we checked out the internal temperature, these reached 45 degrees C after half an hour on the highest setting when connected to a bike battery. After the same amount of time hooked up to the optional wrist batteries for these gloves, we saw an internal temperature of 43 degrees. It's only a couple of degrees between them. Like the G701s, these gloves come with the cables to power them from the bike's battery. And if you want the dedicated wrist batteries, then it's an additional 85 pounds. In terms of thickness, these feel perhaps very slightly thicker than the G701s. These did retain their heat slightly better than the other Kais gloves when we turned them off and let them cool down, but that's also marginal, the difference between the two. In terms of customer reviews, there's nothing that particularly stands out as critical of these gloves, just the usual range of opinions on whether they're hot enough. But our checks show they are on a par with others in terms of heat, and these are a really good shout, especially if you're covering the sort of distances that mean it's best to connect to the bike's battery rather than relying on the wrist batteries. Like the other Gerbing gloves in our list, these are a new model that make it into the top five based on the customer reviews for the gloves that went before. The XR and XRL have a total of 49 five-star reviews out of a combined 87 reviews. If there's one common theme in the less favorable reviews, it's a lack of heat, and Gerbing have addressed that by releasing the Extreme XR and also the Extreme XRL. They're both the same as what's gone before in every sense other than having extra heat available. As this one has a shorter cuff than the XRL and costs a tenner less. These are £180 rather than £190. And as they've done with the Extreme GT that we covered earlier, Gerbing have freed up the power on these gloves to make them warmer than the models they're replacing. You have to deliberately unlock the highest heat setting on these gloves because Gerbing want you to know that it's only to be used when it's very cold outside. 
When we hooked this pair of Extreme XR gloves up to a 12 volt bike battery and left them on the highest setting for half an hour, we recorded a temperature inside the gloves of 55 degrees C. Now that's by far the warmest of any of the gloves we've tried for this video. And it's also about five degrees warmer than we saw when we tested the original XR glove in the same way. The gloves themselves are made all from leather. They've got hard knuckle armor and there's a high porous waterproof membrane inside. As standard, they come with the cables to take power from your bike battery though there's a range of wrist batteries available as optional extras. You can run them from Gerbing's existing 7.4 volt batteries, but they won't get as hot as they will if you're connected up to a 12 volt battery. Now, if you want the highest heat setting through wrist batteries, you'll need Gerbing's 12 volt battery pack, which is coming soon as we record this video, and that will cost an additional 120 pounds on top of the price of the gloves. Now, what I've learned from making this video is that choosing a pair of heated gloves isn't necessarily all that easy. What different people want and what different people expect varies massively. And I've got to admit the technical details of things like voltages, amp powers, current, and all those things don't necessarily come all that naturally to me. I think really there are two main factors when making your decision. First is whether you're prepared to connect up to your bike's battery to get your power. You'll have access to warmer gloves if you are happy with that, and you'll also be able to get that heat for longer as there's no risk of rechargeable batteries running out of power. But lots of people hate the idea of being connected to the bike, and there are others who find it just easier to have small batteries tucked into each cuff. The gloves won't get quite as hot if you power them that way, and you'll have a range of somewhere between two or three hours before the batteries need recharging if you run them on the highest setting. If you prefer the small battery option, then it's hard to look past the RST Paragon 6 gloves from this list. With these, you get the gloves and the batteries for 200 pounds all in, and they're the most popular overall option according to our customers. Very few reviewers say these gloves aren't warm enough for them. If it's the outright hottest gloves you're after, then it's really the Gerbing Extreme XR or XRL that offer that. In our experiments, these got eight degrees hotter than any of the other gloves here, which is actually quite a big difference. If you're more interested in what these are all like as gloves, then I feel the Kais G601s are the nicest to wear, and they offer a decent level of heat, whether they're connected to the bike or to the wrist batteries, although those wrist batteries do cost extra. Kais's G701s aren't far behind, and they give a good option for people who don't want animal skin used in their bike kit. Now, one footnote to add about all this, there is another level of heated bike glove available that I've not included in this video. Ixon and Furigan both have heated gloves in their range that come with temperature regulation. So you can use a phone app to set the temperature inside the gloves, like you would with the thermostat on your central heating at home. None of these five pairs of gloves in this video do that. You choose your heat setting, and if it's not warm enough, you turn it up, and if it's too warm, you turn it down. The Ixon gloves would have made our top five video if supply to the UK wasn't as patchy as it is. They're well worth a look, really, if you can find a pair in your size. It's a similar issue with Furigan on supply, and I just didn't have enough real-world feedback to include them in this list. It's been a bit of a mammoth task to pull this video together, and I hope it helps you decide which is the right route to take to keep your hands warm. But if there's anything you'd like to ask, or if you've got your own heated glove wisdom nuggets to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.